Human rights are for all people in all places. The idea of the rights of individuals can be found in many cultural and legal traditions throughout history. But the modern human rights era that we are usually operating in is usually traced back to the end of World War II. Prior to that, international law was mostly concerned with how countries interacted with each other and not so interested in what happened inside national borders. But the horrors of what governments did to their own citizens during World War II convinced people that international law should have something to say about what happens to people inside borders as well. Now, international law aims to promote and protect individual freedoms as well as human dignity of each person. Human rights are for all people in all places. Here are a few things to keep in mind about human rights law. Governments are obliged to abide by them. They primarily focus on the right of individuals and they are universal. Simply speaking, human rights require governments to do particular things. They must, for example, strive to provide everyone with adequate housing. Human rights laws also prevent governments from forcing individuals to do things like adopting a religion they don't believe in. Human rights are the trump card, and they define the limits on government power. A human right nearly always trumps a government's own interests, so that's why it is important to remember to focus on what the government has or has not done when you're conducting research and reporting on human rights. Human rights are mostly individual rights, and everybody everywhere is entitled to them. At the same time, human rights do also protect communities and groups of people, and good human rights reporting tends to highlight trends that apply to a lot of individuals. When you're doing your research, ask yourself, is there a pattern here? If the answer is yes, you will want to be able to prove that point, and you need to be effective. Sometimes you might be dealing with an unusual case, not a trend. For example, representatives of a government with an otherwise good human rights record on press freedom might be harassing a journalist. This is still a rights violation and is important to record. Human rights law can also be applied in different ways to non-state actors like businesses, militias, or even private individuals. But even in these cases, it's still the government's primary responsibility to ensure that human rights are being upheld. In these cases, the government has a human rights responsibility called due diligence. And this means that they need to prevent or to respond. If a government fails to respond, then it is violating human rights. And when you're conducting your research, and you spot the involvement of non-state actors, it's worth digging into whether or not the government was or is being diligent in its response. One last thing to keep in mind, particularly when dealing with economic and social rights, is the principle of non-discrimination. Discrimination is a human rights violation in itself. But discrimination with regards to another human right is a violation of that right as well. What do we mean? Say you have a country with a great healthcare system. Healthcare is free and great quality and very accessible. And it is only provided to citizens. Non-citizens, even those with legal residency, are excluded from the system. This is discrimination on the basis of nationality and thus a violation of the right to health. Human rights are universal. They apply to all locations and cultural contexts in the world and belong to everyone without discrimination, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, race, gender, age, religion, sexual orientation, or any other trait. Human rights are for all people in all places.